everybody and welcome along to the history program on Lear Media dot TV. That's Lear Media dot TV. And I would welcome along uh, Tom Donovan. Tommy, welcome anywhere along. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you. And you can see the logo up there for the, the Limerick Historical Society. Yeah. Uh, Tom, the last program we did was a few weeks ago. And tonight we're going to start off where we, where we finished off the last time. Uh, yeah. First of all, just to talk about the, the, the new edition of the old Limerick Journal. Yeah. Number 55. 55, yeah. Which is just out now. It's but the problem is, Tom, I hope we can sell it with all the shops that are closed and that, you know. Well, the parkway, the parkway, Easton's in the parkway is open because it's a news agents. They're, they're allowed to open, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and it's in the shops. But what about uh, Pat O'Brien below the Celtic bookshop now? Yeah, yeah. And there's other, there's other news agents, I'm sure, that would have it as well. And yeah. uh, it's a good value of 10 euros. Well, even when people keep it in mind when the shops open up again, or I'm sure they can buy it online. You know, yeah, sure. forget about that, I do. See, I'm, not, I'm not used to buy, to buy anything online, so I'd forget about that. I, would. I wouldn't even realise that. And if that, what would I have to put in, Tom, in to, to, to buy it online? Well, go to the bookshops, but normally buy it in and, uh, the Celtic bookshop. Or... No, but I'm saying if somebody wants to buy it online, what should they do? Just go into the bookshop online. You go into a Mahoney's or, or a Celtic bookshop and they can order it through, the, through those shops. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, is, it is well worth 10 euros. Anyway, at last time, this is a new uh, 2020 edition. And as I said, number uh, 25. And just to hold it up there, if I can hold it up. I know yeah. it's kind of difficult now to figure it out there. But yeah. on the front, there are two, two soldiers. Yeah. Two standing up. Explain, Tom, what we have that. It's the front piece from a journal. It's connected with an article inside, I suppose. It, it makes people wonder what, what's about, what it's about. So it's connected to Henry Bevan, uh, an article about Major Henry Bevan, who was from Limerick and who fought in, in India and the story of his escapades in India. Uh, and his connection with Limerick. Um, so it's just, I suppose, it's something different from churches and pictures of, uh, you know, priests and churches and different people we've had on down through the years. It's just a, no a novelty. And on the back, then there's a sculpture, which I didn't, a sculpture, which I didn't know existed until Desiree told me about it. And it's fantastic what they can do with an, an old tree that fell, you know. Uh, I can give his name now, the guy who did it, but, uh, but a chainsaw, you know. It's hard to believe. Uh, I remember when, uh, when I saw it being done, I'm sure people pass it and don't realise what it is. Yeah. Uh, what, what, God, Will, need, that's Will, a talent. Will Fogarty of Farm Aquila Chainsaw Sculptures. Uh, it's, don't, it's supposed to be Donald Moore O'Brien, uh, who founded St Mary's Cathedral. It's, I'd say it's a very good likeness of him too. Well, I know but it's a fabulous piece of work. Yes, uh, I, I remember bringing my own grandchildren to see it now, because when I saw the guy inside doing it, I was wondering what he was doing with a chainsaw inside yeah. the grounds. Yeah. And when I saw it, it's magnificent. This, like, what it, you can do. You know, your, I saw an European in the People's Park doing something similar. You now he's doing just be you know wasps and. But the detail that's in that. Yeah. It's fabulous. I mean, school yeah. children, I'm sure, the school are awkward now, but they should be brought in to see it. Yeah. And let them see what can be done with, with sculpturing. And also yeah. to explain who he was and about yeah. the founding of the cathedral and that. Yeah. But I think you were flogging a dead horse half the time you know, with some of the teachers, you know. You show you no interest, I, I suppose, in, in, yeah. in local memorial. history. You show the memorial to your brother the Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But in, inside, inside the covers in the front, the front cover, inside the front cover, there's yeah. a portrait of Robert McMahon. Yeah, he's a little, little known mayor of Limerick. Um, yeah, very little about him, you know. And he's the man, as it says in the article, about uh, you're getting cock, cock and re. Yeah. Now, a lot of Limerick people will associate cock and re with the dump. Yeah. <laughs> with, well, that, well, that's what you And incidentally, during the week, I had somebody on a programme on about uh, the word barn brack. Yeah. You know, what was it? And the brack bit, as in court brack, yeah. the speckled house, and yeah. court brack, speckled, you know, the speckled house. And what's his name down in Cork? What's his name with the glasses, the, 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 
the man that was lecturing UCC, can't you give his name now? Um, oh. A brilliant man. There was oh. never, he was never a doctor or a professor. Not a view. He helped us with the glimmer. Um Anyways, he told me, I remember I asking him about court black, and he said to me that there was a house there that belonged to the Earl of Desmond. Yeah. Some kind of a speckled house mm. on the lands down there. And that's how it became on court black, the speckled yeah. thing, speckled yeah. house. Because you've never seen court, it was a castle or some fortification, you know, yeah. uh, in the area. But of course, you have the the, the logo of the Limerick Historical Society down there as well. In oh, yeah, I have just this, I forgot about that, the snow fox, which I keep. It's a shame that that's not flood lit at night. Yeah. At that little curiosity there, because a lot of people don't even know it is there, which is a shame, really. I mean, but, back to McMahon, little, a lot of people nowadays wouldn't even know that there was a slab land in that area. Like, you heard the McMahon's timber and all that down there, that was all slab land, as was Arctic's key. You know, a lot of Limerick is built on slabland, reclaimed oh, slabland. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought they're having problems in Cork now with that lately, as yeah. regards to flooding. Yeah. Because you forget that with, um, when land is reclaimed, sometimes <laughs> the water wants to get back yeah, yeah, where, yeah. to where it was before, and you have problems. But Cork and Ree, when I was a child, it was a city dump, and yeah. it used to be blazing, especially on a Sunday night. Yeah. Uh, but Nora's pickles would go in there when I was looking for kind of. Yeah. Odds and ends, mm. and there was a man who used to live in there, in a car. I yeah. spoke about this before it was on the history program. He said uh, he lived in a car in there, and he, 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 I, nobody ever knew who he was. He was a, a sort of want of a better word, a down and out. But yeah. he lived inside in an old car inside in the dump, yeah. and the the maintainer, my uncle George Miloni, used to say that he was saved twice by the rats. Yeah. That when the water was flooding in. The rats would run across from the river, the banks were broken, and the rats, there's so many rats running over his car, he'd wake up, <laughs> he'd run as well. Yeah. Yes, suppose. Harry, he was known by the nickname of Harry Bowie. Now, whatever that means, I do not know. Yeah. Uh, I always remember uh, my uncle talking about Harry Bowie. Yeah. Few people used to see him, and yeah. he lived uh, inside, in the, inside in the edge of the river, in, in Cockenry, as it was, the dump. It's hard to believe now, looking at it, that it was the dump. In fact, over 40 years ago, my brother was going to Tormac College, as he called it, and he's hitching home on it, and the shower rain came, and he's uh, uh, he's afraid of his life of rats and mice, because he was like Harry Bowie, uh, the rats ran across the road. Yeah. Well, I remember, again, I was a child, I remember there'd been a concrete road there, you know, the concrete roads would have in patches, and all along there, you see all the dead rats in the road, uh, running and obviously being knocked down by cars at night. Yeah. It was little as rats down there. And um, like that, again, the whole area then was cleared. The only was there was the ESB had a pole field there. Yeah, I remember that. Smell a crease up for about, for about a mile away from it when you go down the Long Avenue. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, but this is McMahon. That's why we're wondering, you know. That's what Bob was on about the mayor, McMahon. Yeah. He was the man that uh, got it signed over. Yeah. The city, as opposed from the from the county, which English had it anyway at the time. He was, a, he, he was around the same time as Lenham. Uh, I think he was before Lenham. Yeah. That in the in the back inside the back cover, then there's a, an unusual portrait of uh, Lord Goff. Oh, yes. My aunt used to say, if you were sitting, uh, kind of lying on a chair, my aunt said, "Look at him. He thinks he's Lord Goff. Yes. You know, there's, there's something you haven't lived with for years." Of course, he was born outside in Woodsdown, out in, um, which is now the home of the, the Daughters of Charity. Uh, yeah. Outside in Anacotti there, but they call it Lisa Negroi, but I call it Anacotti. Yeah. Just as you go over the bridge. And a very good, there. With a very good lecture, lecture uh, on him by uh, Chris. Um, listen, guy gave us a lecture one night. He was a vet for Mount Contemporary. Didn't you like No. <laughs> <laughs> You give us like a lot, isn't it? A lot of golf. I probably do it just to It's a better. I'm not a golf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was like Chris. It was a better mean or no point. Chris Kinman, I think, was his name. Is it Chris? Let me last time, no. No, he gave us a lecture. 
And you can, you can go to Castle Condon Society afterwards. Yes, I have made it. It's unusual that I can't remember that. Yeah, yeah. Where's he from? Over in Ireland. Maybe it was the Castle Condon I saw him. I'd say so, because I'd remember it every time. You can go to Castle Condon. Because yeah. I never, I don't think I ever had a lecture on him. Because when, when Goff left Woodstown, he moved up actually to La Couture, above in uh, County Galway, which was um, uh, Lord Bossy's name's house, which was um, Goth's house. As a, by coincidence, I have his card here, Declan Gill. Oh, Declan Gill, I didn't talk, no, I didn't talk in different degree altogether. He was talking about Opus Dei. Oh, was that him? Yeah, it must be. That's, yeah. why I had, uh, that's why I had him talking about. Oh, right, I had his card, but we definitely had a guy talking about. Yeah, because... Um, I don't remember, I didn't talk about Opus Dei and all right. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but Lord Goff, or Lord um, Goff, as mm. opposed to Goff, Goff moved up to live at La Coutre. That's yeah. where was his name stayed when he was in Ireland, uh, Prince Charles. He stayed there with uh, Camilla. Yeah. And uh, he, the, in the wallpaper, there's wallpaper actually on the wall of that inside, with the Goff coat of arms on the wallpaper. Yeah. But it's still, still there now, but it was there anyway. 10 years ago, anyway. So I, I presume it's still there on the left hand side as you go in, for the kind of waiting room inside. Goff put up all his, um, his own wallpaper with the Goff, because uh, it mentioned it there and that, that um, he got this big award. He became, what was it in, in India? Uh, Welcome Goff of Bhujan. Bhujan, yeah. He, he came back, he got a lot of record money when he came back. But his yeah. name gives him nearly a full page, then him. Because they were subscribing to the History Limit at the time. And he got a full page and all the money, the tanks he got of Parliament. But what did they do in India? They supposed to massacre all the Indians out there. When you think about it. You, you won the, the battle, the big battle against the Sikhs. And oh, yeah, slaughtered them. It's, oh, they did. You know, they um, had these battles, but they never tell you who, the, who yeah. suffered in these battles. Just he got a big grant when he came back from, the, from Parliament, I remember. And the tanks of Parliament. Lenin covers that now a fair bit. Yeah. And uh, all about uh, what he got when he came back. Anyway, let's yeah. we move on. There's a inside Tom. Owen Devereaux has a piece inside the cover, inside the first thing. The poem. No, it, it's it deals with the um, Mulgrave Street and his memories of Mulgrave Street, and it's very good. Anybody, you know, there was so much industry along you know, the Ardness Barracks, the, uh, as they say, the mad, the bad, the days. Mm. The, 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 Jail, the Shaw's factory, you had um, the rail link across the way, um, you had the hay market, of course, beside, the, we, we discussed that before, the hay market, which is convenient to know, because the army was, was the cavalry, where the, they had the cavalry there, where the, and that's the need to feed the horses. So people forget, like, why do you have a hay market down there? And also, the markets were near to the railway station, you know, to carry your goods. But um, no, he, it's a very good article. And, and, um, a very good poem, rather. Um, and, um, because it was, a, it was a hive of activity. Yeah. You think of all the, mainly the bacon factories over there, and even you had, um, and afterwards, for, well, at the turn of the century, you had Hazelbecks even there. They were just yeah. around the corner in the, in Cathedral Place. Yeah. Where they made the covers for the, for the, 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 the packet, the skins for the packet. Yeah. Uh, Arnold Hazelbeck discovered a way of doing that. Of uh, making some kind of a stronger skin for the for packet, and of course Limerick was big for for packet and tripe as we know it. But was he, father, was he father of the cameraman? Yeah, could have been his father. Yeah, his friends, I think. And yeah. uh, um, Ricardo was the first man. Then Franz was the man with the camera who took yeah. all the pictures for that book that Patsy Hazelbeck brought out. Mm-hmm. But. That old Devereux piece goes on for a good bit, and it's very good now to read it, and especially yeah. if you're, well, if you're, I suppose, really, it, 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 it appeals to people from that end of the city. Yeah. I don't know, well, everybody, but mainly from the yeah. Gary Owen area and that. Because and then I... next to that, there's, there's a picture piece by um, Mike McGuire. Yeah. And it's a guide to the local studies website, which yeah. is excellent, I have to say. Before we move on, please. If you want it, God, you forget to come off. What? When you go on to the website, you forget oh. to you forget to stop. But the first sets in marriages in Limerick. Oh, Devereux mentions a, 
a character, which is a way of saying, a fellow called, he was Raymond Troy, his name was Bisto. Did you ever hear of him? Who? He was a kind of a character in Limerick. Raymond Troy, his name was Bisto. Oh. Yeah. Only Prime Minister Troy's in Limerick were, um, were the bakery, Troy's bakery. Yeah. And then you had a doctor, Dr. Kathleen Troy, who used to go around in a car working for the, the dispensary. She lived above Nocanel Avenue, I remember, there, the, the demount. And uh, if we see her going into a house, she'd always have the stethoscope around her neck. She'd get out of the car and she'd go in. And the car door sometimes would fling open. Of course, nobody would, would knock off the car that time. We're going back now to the, to the late 50s. Good the But uh, she's actually come I came across that now about the, the, the Troy's Bakery, of course. They had two branches. They had one in Catham Street and one down in, in Patrick Street. Yeah. Patrick Street one became, um, God, it's all changed now, became Powell Small Profit Stores. And the one above in Catham Street still is the kind of facade. It was only just selling up there. The bacon was done down in, in Patrick Street. But yeah. the one in, in, the, in it's just around the corner from the Royal Cinema there. It was an antique shop. And it was, but anyway, it's still there anyway, the outside of the building. But, uh, sure. but that's the only try I came across there now. But this piece, there's two maps here, which yeah. I have. I have copies of those two maps. And uh, we're done of Limerick. One was done, I think that one was done in 1690, the one in the bottom by Dutchman. Yeah. And the one on top was a plan of Limerick. Yeah. Setting out of the streets of Limerick. And yeah. it lets you see how small the city was yeah. on both of them. Yeah. It was tiny. And the one on the bottom, you can see the English town and the Irish town, yeah. both walled in. It's amazing, really, how on which the, the city had. And to think a Dutchman did that. Yeah. Like a horse. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the highest thing he would have had. He yeah. wouldn't have had one of those cherry pickers to be able to look down from it. Yeah, but they're beautiful maps there. Yeah. But that article by Mike McGuire, Mike is really very good down in the in the reference section of the library. Yes. I, I, I did an introduction there because I, I was saying to him, you know, that he needs to let people know because a lot of people don't know what's on the website. You know, you know and I know, but to get people out there like... Yeah. Maybe, yeah. It's been, I mean, I've often been up. Uh, my daughter, my daughter's friend was working in the library one time, and um, Mike McGuire said to her, "You tell Mary, my my daughter, to tell her, tell her his fa tell his fa her father to get a life." She said, "I sent him an email at three o'clock in the morning. There's a mistake on the obituaries." Yeah. He said, "You know, it's sad when you're up at three o'clock in the morning reading the obituaries." From the 19th century. Well, it's, fan it's fantastic, you know, your families, you know yourself. Well, with, the, with the deaths, but yeah. I'm curious about all the, you can see the amount of people that died and where they're buried. And it's yeah. interesting, different various years. He links to, so he it's links, to come across. He links to I came part. across one lately now of somebody, and uh, I, don't, I can't give the name, it doesn't really matter, but I saw the townland there is, and yeah. it said this per person came from Ballyfoukeen in Brewery. Yeah. Now, I knew somebody uh, that um, lived on the town in the Bally Fouquin. If you're familiar with, with Rose Cross outside, yeah. uh, if you're going for Limerick, turn right. Left, obviously, will take you to to uh, yeah. Brewery itself. But uh -huh. turn right. And Bally Fouquin Townland is on the left-hand side going up. But I rang this man just to say to him that I came across somebody is it that is died in the, in the, the townland of Bally Fouquin. Mm -hmm. He says to me, what was her name? When I told him her name, he said, that was my aunt, he says, <laughs> 1950 it was, he said, I can remember when, he says, when she died. He, yeah. he went into a big, long list all about her. That They had a hotel, imagine having a hotel now in Croom, the, the Riverview Hotel. It was next to, people in Croom now would know where Halpin's Hall was. It was yeah. a local dance hall going into Croom from Limerick on the left-hand side. The hotel was next to that. And um, he, he used to go in there to visit his aunt, who was the person that died. He said, she died in my house here, he said, in 1950. Yeah. A coincidence, yeah. isn't it? You yeah. know, the way I just happened to pick her out of the hundreds and hundreds of, uh, yes. of deaths in Limerick in 1950. And well, the only problem is, they're done, you have to go in, if they're done by year, by what debt, and it's, it's, it's a problem looking for something sometimes. Well, it's done by alphabetical as well, if you want to go in. Um... There's alphabetical listings A to Z, Z. 
And uh, so if you want to look up grounds, if you went under the B, there's A to Z and then there's uh, years. So yeah. if you want to look up all the browns, you can win under and click on the B and this all the browns. So uh, that's another way of finding it. But uh, he also has linked in to Mount St. Lawrence. So if you look up, say, a brown date, you, you, if, it's, if there's a headstone on Mount St. Lawrence, he links that in. So it's, it's quite, you know, well done. But you, the only thing is you need, um, you need patience and you need to be looking for something. But with me, and I'm sure you, you just start scanning through it and you see people that you know who they are. You yeah. know, it's, it's funny. You just pick a year. I pick years at random that I might remember somebody. Yeah. And it up pops the death in front of you. And the addresses then, of course, Limerick has changed so much in the yeah. past 20 years that most of the addresses are before the corporations started building houses, you know, yeah. outside. They were yeah. more clustered in together. So, for example, Kerry's Road now, I remember the lane was in Kerry's Road and I'd know, I'd know where they were. You know, there was a Browns Lane, which we didn't own, incidentally, but there was a Browns Lane, Welsh's Lane, my people came from, and uh, just off Kerry's Road. And all the lane was, you'd have to know the names, what you looked for. But it's very easy to make a mistake. No yeah. problem. As you yeah. know, that, um, you could have somebody out who couldn't be the person at all. That you're, you're, <laughs> just you're right and in rural areas, they often put in the wrong townland, you know, the, well, especially in the 20th century. The Undertaker is probably doing the, the and knows the, the guys from, let's say, Nianus or that yeah. area. It might be the exact townland, but, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's a hassle, like, and it's, you, need, you need to know the spellings, of course, are dreadful. What they yeah. want to put down, even the spellings of surnames. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, sometimes you try to figure it out. You know, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but there are certain names that come up and yeah. the spellings are wrong. But the, what's interesting is sometimes to put down who attended the funeral, you know, yeah. uh, relatives. And that way you can make out who the person is related to, you know, their, their brother, yeah. Their, yeah. Their, the wife's brother, you know, and you can build up information like that. Um, and all the, the gentry in town, I'm sure you came across, but it's in the carriage. Yeah. Just in the, <laughs> just in the carriage now. It's like sending a card. You, you didn't and, go. Uh, behind in these times, and it now with, with COVID and that, just to send the carriage. Yeah. But you just send a, um, a morning coach down. Nobody yeah. needs just send the coach, you know. Because you want to send your parents. Yeah. And like that was, and if they didn't put it in, you'd often see corrections in the papers afterwards that they left out somebody who had attended. They put down, they say Tony Brown. They leave out Tony Brown, and the next episode, next edition, they say we, we omitted Tony Brown, who was at the two end. You know, so, <laughs> we'll we'll there's, there's another have to get one. Well, first of all, before we finish it, Mike McGuire. Mike is very helpful if anybody was ever looking for anything. You can't, well, you won't get him now at the moment, but the granary, and they're moving to under the granary across the road. No, across from where the garden centre was, there, the old in store. There yeah. at the corner of Robert Street and Ellis Street. Um, uh, they're, they're moving because they're doing this, uh, this long promised opera center, whatever happens. But they're being moved anyway. And the gar the, our garden center is closed down as well because of the opera center. So we've lost three yeah. um, yeah. yeah, But as well as the obituaries, he had loads of books and journals of, you know, his Lenin's history, um, uh, up, and he has. Uh, Ferrers, all the history books, and he has uh, the history of Kildaimo, local parish histories, and uh, he's putting up lots of old parish journals and that. Uh, and he's a uh, the, 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 the trades and street directories, which you have a lot of. He's all those. That's anything to read. Well, for me, the other anyway. The only, as I said again, the only thing is that it gives addresses in Limerick of places that are long gone. It's yeah. a bit, you try to figure out, yeah. you know, that if you, if you don't know who you're looking for, like, it's, it's difficult. But he's, he's very helpful, that Mike is, down in the, in the gallery. And uh, for the county, then, the, the grand jury presentment books, which is the building of roads and bridewells, uh, you know, um, there's lots of information there from, from the county. And then you have O'Donovan's field land books, and, uh, and the, for GAA, he's the O'Kelly collection. 
Well, Kenny was a guy who collected GA material down through the years and uh, every, his all 500 clubs. But there's, a, there's some fantastic, <coughs> excuse me, um, um, like it, I, I even learned reading the article things that are on the website that I didn't know existed. You know, yeah. his, he's, he's all the time adding. So every time you go in, there's something new put up, you know. So the, I would, the grand jury I, presentments are very interesting. It shows yeah. you um, how much it costs to build yeah. 14 perches. The only thing is it confusing out to young children, they wouldn't be using perches anymore. But it tells you how many perches, how much it costs. And roads. Roads, <laughs> yeah. Well, you forget what the, the old measurements. Some people yeah. say, thank God for that, you know, but it's confusing. Come here, we move it on. The next article I see is one you did yourself. Some of Frey at a tea. Yeah. Out know, in, 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 in West Limerick. Yeah. What's now, that to do about? This article's done about six years, but I um, I usually, if, if people come in with articles, I, I try and give a mix, but this is about. Um, a a tear really was a mountainous area that was not developed um, very well and until they built a roadway, Griffiths built a roadway through it in 1836. Up to then it was a kind of a, a refuge for bandits and um, white boys. Uh, and the reason they built a roadway through it was for access to the markets and to suppress the insurgents and the banditti and all these names they called them. But um, actually, the uh, Thomas F. Conan, who, did, who, who collected a lot of folklore, uh, had referenced the attack. Now, he had the wrong date, but we'll forgive him that he had collected folklore about the attacks. And um, one guy was called Evans, who lived in Glynn, and he went to collect back arrears of rent. And the, um, the locals gathered and attacked him, and they, they followed the police back down to Glen and they threatened to um, burn down the town. And the United Glen had to take the policemen into the castle for protection. Um, but it's a, and, and incidentally, the Colberts were middlemen. They were um, uh, ancestors of Colbert, I'm Colbert. I'm Colbert um, 1916 leader. But interestingly, they were on the side of the landlord. They were the guys going out collecting the rents. Um, you know, so. Not all things stay the same. So it's just, it's of its time. It was, you know, um, it, it was a, a like, a tail was between Glen and every field, two towns, and it was only a kind of a rural mountains area. A lot of illicit distillation, they to make money from uh, Pochine, selling Pochine, that was one of their bigger incomes. And they resented any outsiders coming in, mainly because they would take the sales of them. And they also was. Oh, Tom, how was United Glen? Was he not? He wasn't the landlord of the tail, was he? No, no. He was no, the local. The ghouls. What? I think Goals. the ghouls said. The ghouls came later. Is that, uh, yeah. There was a fellow called Hamel. He, he, he was there. I never heard of him, but he was the landowner. Yeah. And then Evans owned all the parts of the land. And he, was, he was a brother of De Lacey Evans. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, Hamill kind of bought the land and thought they'd pay his rent straight up, but they didn't pay the rent and they kept it. And he tried to get a real the arrears from them then, and that's caused the problem. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the goals came in later, they came in around the 18, late 1820s. Um, but how the nice link came in, he was the nearest magistrate. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was the local magistrate, and the police went to him for refuge. But um, it's just it's different times, like you know. Um, and what uh, what has Fort Shannon got to do with that? That's where Evans lived. Oh, Evans lived in Fort Shannon House. Got yeah. a beautiful house. That is. You know, people don't give you notice there. Yeah. Um, on yeah. on the left hand side, we're obviously like. And, um, the the family you the couple you know uh, have sold it now. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, houses. And who was in America for years has come home and he's put a lot of money into it. But it needs, it take, takes a lot of money, you know. Uh, you can see in the picture you've in there now, and to, to, to the right of it, you can see yachts and two sailing boats out on the river, showing you how, how close it is to the Shannon. Yeah. You know, it's a beautiful house, this. And uh, you pass it there, you can't really see it from the road. You want to be ready for it, kind of. 
And yeah. there's, he's very close to the road, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. And you've got a picture there of a house in Glen. That's where um, the, the sergeant lived, Joseph Sergeant. He was yeah, sergeant. I know that house, yeah. He, he, he was the guy sent to collect the rents as well. There was two attacks. Sergeant was about the second one. And that's in Hamilton's Terrace, that house. Yeah, yeah. And when I, when I looked at the picture, I said, I knew what it was, straight away. But I, I always just thought, the locals call it Ate, they pronounce it as Ate. Oh, yeah. They call it Ate. Yeah. And yeah. I associate it really with Kerry more than Limerick. Yeah. Even the accent is, is, is very Kerry. Yes, and um, I'd say you're probably more Kerry football supporters in Ate than you would have. And, and parts of every field, then the, I think they're the kind of a price of the pension yeah. limit they carry. Um, they're, they're very, like they're on the border, they're, they're very carry, you know, um, like you say, their accents. Some of them go to school in Kerry, they go into my van, um, you know, like Bally Gilton, which is at the end of Glen Parish and drains at Hay. Yeah. A lot of that school have pupils from, from my, my van, and then some of them go back to, like, they're, so they're interchangeable. And yeah. Not so much in, I'd be feeling Glen didn't have their own friend. They don't mix, like Glen and Tarbot don't mix as much. At, uh, like, r r a tay being a rural area, they tend to go, like, anybody who dies in a tay goes to Lines' funeral parlor in the <laughs> store. Like, you know, so. yeah. uh, that, happen that happens in Limerick, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. If somebody dies in, in um, and mainly down around St. Mary's Park and that, there are always crosses. Yeah. And there's, uh, the, the working class areas, there's always crosses. And uh, if somebody dies, and I defy anybody to prove me wrong, if somebody dies from, from the North Circle or the South Circle, there's always Thompson's. Griffin's yeah. kind of, Griffin's a kind of building the road, yeah. you know. <laughs> but it's funny, really, when I hear a debt, I, I really know what's, um, what, yeah. what's uh, funeral panels ever going to. Well, I, to I see the yeah. next article here they have is the one and, and, and Bevan. Actually, the Bevan family are still there. Yeah. They're outside in Brough, in Camus in Brough. Camus in Brough, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And because uh, the house is badly damaged by fire, oh God, it must be 10, 15 years ago now. It's an old Camus house, which really was a pity. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but that, that, that family, one of them changed the name at one stage to, um, to Van Bevan. Why I don't know. I never kind of got wrong to that. Yeah. But um, but, but um, the Bevan family were well known in the in the Brough area. But this yeah. man is going back a bit now, Major Henry Bevan. Yeah. Twenty seventh Madras, Native yeah. Infantry. Yeah. Um, is it? Uh, he was born in seventeen nineties. Like as you, it was really, uh, and as you say, he was born in in um, uh, in Kamas. Camus near Brough. So he was like there was he had four brothers and four sisters, which was unusual in a in a gentry family to have nine children. You know? Yeah. Uh, and they all survived into adulthood. And um, because he went to school in England, which uh, mo most of the gentry did like, at the time. Uh, but, but he this this article is based on his autobiography and very little it, military men who wrote biographies. Very little of the they devoted very little of it to their personal. They just say what they bought. They don't give the their brothers and sisters and who their mother was or father was. You know that's I suppose that's for the um, the books or whatever the the, the the family. If you want to look up the family, you can go into the gentry or the you know the what you call the, the books with the, gent, the family records. But, um, this, this is just a story. Like, it's really about um, his military career uh, in the early 19th century. And like, like, like you said earlier, a lot, a lot of it is suppressing uh, insurrection in India and keeping the East India Company, which is the big money, the, the cash cow for the British Empire, you know, the East India Company. Because, uh, I mean, the East India Company were were oh, the dreadful things they did. To, just to make money, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard to believe. Uh, I mean, uh, there was a good program on television when I was about the about the East India Company, and some mm. of the things they did and the the slaughter they caused in India, you know, just really for money. The amount of money they took out of India, 
yeah. and of course it all finished on the was it the 27th of June 1857 at the yeah. Battle of Plassey when yeah. uh, Clive was the man that finished the last nabob so it was all over after that and it really became part of England mm. after the Battle of Plassey yeah. I think it's about, about 10 miles north of Calcutta where, where, where Clive was but he also to hear that you what you mentioned about that uh, his widow married Van Bevan, a cousin living in Kamas. Van Bevan, yeah, I knew one of them changed the name. I don't know why he changed it to Van Bevan. Uh, but I suppose apart from the slaughter, and you could say the same in Ireland, the, the British did leave, you know, they, they mapped out India, the left beautiful buildings, you know, uh, at a price. Right. Some of the beautiful buildings that they, they, they luckily have survived out there. They did um, they did the railways out there. Yeah. There's millions going. You see programs on television, you see fellas on the tops of of, of, of trains and hanging out. To, hanging, yeah. Says a lot for what is the health and safety. We see yeah. the guys hanging out, to, <laughs> hanging out the door. You see trains. Them every day. Trains. trains. And yeah. that was all built by the, well, the design was by England, the English. Yeah. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of it for military purposes as well, you know. Oh, yeah, but they, 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 were, they were cute from what they did. Can we, we move along because we, we, we get to... But I should tell people, incidentally, we're broadcasting here on lyrmedia.tv and uh, we welcome criticism. Well, we'll see. And let us know. Let us know if any, if any uh, of the six people will be watching us and let us know and uh, what they think in that. Anyway, we move along to uh, Des Ryan's article here. Des is two articles. He's one here about the mutiny in India in 1920. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, Again, the, it's amazing the amount of Irish that fought out there, you know, in, in oh. India, and in all the armies for England. Well, it comes and, uh, there, was, uh, there was a Limerick man, not an Irishman, in every regiment. Limerick man, yeah, yeah. And uh, when you think about the Limerick man, and multiply that by 32 counties, you know, the amount of Irish people that fought. Um, but, but like, as, as Ireland began fighting for independence, a lot of these soldiers, Kind of said to themselves, why am I fighting uh, with Britain when my brothers or cousins or, brothers or friends at home are fighting against them? So uh, they made a stand in in um, in India. There was also a, um, a mutiny in well, not so much a mutiny um, in the stove where policemen refused to pay orders and there was they were um, attacked. There's a map here though in this. It shows you where the, the Punjab region is. Yeah. And it's mapped out. And then on top of that, you have, I just see Amistad up to it on the left hand side of that. That was yeah. created again by another Irishman who was well, obviously Dwyer. He was the yeah. man that uh, commanded the massacre of all the Indians in Amistad. He yeah. was dreadful. Yeah. What he did. I think he came back. I think he had his comeuppance when he came back. He came back to live in London. He, he was Irish as well. And he dropped the O. He was Dwyer. Yeah. And uh, they, they fired on the, on the crowd and massacred all the Indians at Amistad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's well documented. It was in the last time, actually, that they, 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 they massacred, massacred. And, and, and they got away with it. Did, did yeah. yeah. There's nothing about it, you know. And, uh, but, anyway, but the article is very good. Uh, and the Connacht Rangers banner here is here. Why is he the Connacht Rangers? There must be the Connacht Rangers, is it? The Connacht Rangers, they're in the Connacht Rangers, the Mutineers, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of names down here of people from, from Limerick and that who were in there. Yeah, he was. The names you'd recognize. Canary today would be a real kind of name anyway, you know. Gogarty, yeah. McGowan, Morton. A lot of them now would be West, well, I would cast as West of Ireland names, yeah. who obviously would have been in the kind of strangers, who would have come out from Gardner anyway. And there's yeah. a, there's yeah. a memorial here to the kind of strangers in Glasnevin Cemetery. And all the names around that too, I see. That's right. Well, the limit, there was a Peter Curran, uh, he was from Croom. Patrick Lynch was living at Mrs. Lemon's house in Rossa Avenue, Limerick. I can't remember. Where's Rossa Avenue? Rossa Avenue is at South Mulgar Street, going yeah. up nearly as far as the jail there, on the left hand side if you're going up. Yeah. Rossa Avenue. There, there was another avenue there actually which kind of lost its, its name over the year, Congress Avenue. It kind yeah. of brought it now into. More or less into Ross Avenue. Congress Avenue kind of died away. We never hear of anybody in Congress Avenue now. I'm looking at the names in that headstone there. Joseph Daly. 
executed. I don't know, down and out uh, for Irish freedom. The, the mutiny in India. Well, that's the mutiny, yeah. And, um, and the Irish got to help what was going on at home. Yeah. And they tried to, they tried to have this mutiny, but of course, they hadn't the power with them. The whole thing was all, was it John, say, all pushed out. John McGrath from Grattan Street. Oh, Grattan Street, isn't it? What is it? Grattan Street. Yeah, Grattan Street is off John Street now. Yeah. Uh, what's the name? What's the son then? McGrath. McGrath, yeah. And Billy Cobb, now. That's uh, just up there. He's going up to Donkey Falls on the left hand side, Grattan Street is. It's still there, it's still survives anyway. John Rafter is in the usual name at White, White Lane of Connell Street. Oh, yeah, but, but White, uh, White Lane is gone now, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, some of the laneways have gone out together, especially in Panel Street. Panel Street was a hive of laneways when I was going to school. There were so many laneways. You went up one and you went into another laneway. Uh, there's one there now, she was only talking about it about two weeks ago. If you know, well, I'll give them free advertising here now to Luigi. But next to Luigi's fish and chip shop there, there's a gateway which seems to be commandeered by them. That was a laneway going up to a load of houses. I remember going up that laneway. That's Squeeze Gut Lane. You what? Is that Squeeze Gut Lane? No, Squeeze Gut Lane is down further. It's in behind um, where Michael McKay had a, a wallpaper shop. He brought oh. me up on the roof on there to show me what Squeeze Gut Lane was. You can see it. Really, it's a pity that it's not opened up. You mm. could see it. The distance between the houses is about, um, I suppose, it wouldn't even be good for, for Corvus. There's definitely isn't two metres. There's, uh, I'd say it's about, about two feet from one house to another. Mm. I have to believe. In the laneway. Yeah. And uh, the houses are tiny and it's preserved, but you can't get into it. We have to go up in the roof of this shop to look down into it. That came because of the radio programme three years ago. So yeah. it was all about that. Say. And yeah. Michael Clyden said to me, I know what it is, it's still there. So to show it to me to bring me up onto the roof to look down into the laneway. And to there in Panel Street on the left hand side as you approach the traffic lights. That's mm. Squeeze Lane. Where there's White's Lane and the Red Ladies Lane, they're all nearly gone now. Ladies Lane luckily just about survives. That was um... that's a good name. I don't think there were many ladies in the ladies lane, you know. You know, mm. we wonder that was another slay name for it, you know. <laughs> ladies <laughs> Lane. We'll move again. <laughs> McMahon, McMahon, there's McMahon in Tormengate, and there was a, a Madigan in Castle and Conyers. These are on the mutiny. Oh, Castle and Conyers, no, it's a, it's a long way out from yeah. the city. I'm looking here at the next article there was Sean Gannon. Yes, as usual. Uh, all about the curfew murders, which we should really explain to people what the curfew murders were. The, I suppose. Um, it was O'Callaghan and, and uh, Clancy. George Clancy, George Clancy. Oh, there's a picture here of the two of them. George Clancy and Michael O'Callaghan, yeah. who were murdered. Indeed. Uh, and one I told when we went to visit the house. Both okay. houses, luckily enough, survive. Yeah. Look at them. Clancy's house is still there, up the back of St. Munch Church. And we visited um, uh, Michael O'Callaghan's house. Do you remember? Uh, the, the Strand Hotel. They had the bonus. The bullet marks were still in, in the in the line or underneath the cut floor cover. Have to believe, yeah. yeah. You yeah. have to believe. They just they just arrived at the door that night and shot them one after the other. And, and they shot, uh, they shot just daily. Yeah. away with that. And they shot daily. They shot daily as well. Oh, they forgot about that, yeah. And oh god, dreadful. Yeah. And then they took out I don't know who. I don't know who was taken out. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He was taken out of Liddy's house and badly beaten, and his body was, was just cast aside above in Jamesboro. There's a memorial to him there, right at the back of where anybody knew where Jack Fork used to live. And yeah. um, the flag is often flying there, but it's a shame that if he could pass out that memorial above on, uh, on a Dunhu Avenue, uh, yeah. right across from, from Jamesboro Church, really. People don't even know the memorial is there, I'm sure. But it's a lovely memorial to him. And he, he was badly beaten. His body just cast that, you know, he wouldn't do it to a dog. No. Unfortunately, that was the, that was the way I'm just looking here at the case of Michael Callaghan, the limit curfew murders on the 7th of March, 1921. Uh, Councillor and ex-mayor, because Clancy was mayor, but he was, uh, Callum was the year before him, yeah. and presented by his widow. 
Mm. And take a page to the mother. That's his wife was Kate O'Callaghan. Yeah. But the, um, the, article, the article is about a diary, diaries that um, Sean Gannon got uh, of Ibbotson. Ibbotson. Ibbotson, yeah. And uh, he tried to justify that he wasn't involved, but all, all fingers pointed towards him. Oh, yeah. Being the, I mean, they tried to. Uh, Nathan. They tried to. In 1937. Yeah. Here's the they tried to maintain there was a feud amongst the IRA and they took out Clancy and O'Callaghan. Yeah. Uh, that was all, you know, disproved. Oh, um, yeah, so what can you do? Yeah. Who wanted to show there'll be nothing anymore about it as well. But that's a fine article by Sean Gannon. Sean works in the library as well. But yeah. he's, he's, he's out in um, Ross. Watch House Cross. Watch House Cross, yeah. Um, this article here is... Um, from the, the Marcus Field to Flanders Field, Munster Rugby's first meeting with the All Blacks. Yeah. And well, George Lee, this is not, RTE, yeah. not RTE, George Lee. Um, actually, I'd say they're all connected. Uh, you were talking about uh, Lee's Cross by the go out near, or Rose Cross, you know. Um, and I think the, the Lees came from there. You know, certainly George Lee and RTE came from there. Oh, George Lee's from the yeah, Lee's Cross. Yeah, yeah Mrs. Mrs. Harrington was Lee herself. She was outside, Joe Harrington, outside in the day. That's right. She was Lee. She yeah. was Lee of Lee's Cross. And a lot of people out in, uh, in, in West Limerick now, Brewery, and that would know where, where Lee's Cross is. Yeah. And the Eiffel is one of them. Near, near where Belly Fouquet is. It's not too far from yeah. Belly Fouquet. Just uh, keep going on that road. Yeah. Keep going on the road from Belly Fouquet. You come yeah. to Lee's Cross. And I but, see that there's, um, there's uh, Gallagher, Dave Gallagher. Dave Gallagher in uniform here, first of all. And well, one, it's um, the All Blacks played Ireland, and two members of the team, an Irish man, uh, Basil McClear, the you know, Northern Irish guy, and uh, Dave Gallagher. They, they, they fought on opposite sides and were killed in the First World War, but they had played against each other in the... Um, in the All Blacks versus Ireland game, but it's an interesting story of the um, tying in sport and the First World War. You know, the futility of war. Um, yeah, it's, this was played in the Marcus Field, was it? Yeah, this was played in the Marcus Field. The game was played in the Marcus Field before they left the Saturday. Yeah, and John, well, that, like they were ahead of their time, really. If you go to Europe. A lot of um, cities have municipal grounds. They have, like, if you go to France now, they'll have a one big pitch, and they'll play soccer, rugby, you know, hockey, everything on it, and it's developed. Instead of it, like in Limerick, you have Tolman Park, Gaelic grounds, like you'd have one big pitch. So how many times a year did they play there? You know, it's yeah, you know, waste. Whereas yeah. Yeah. And that's what the field was originally it was it, you know, they had the markets and then they had games there, and you could, you know, it's yeah. rugby. Soccer, you know, not GA, of course. It's, um, it's a good idea, wouldn't it, to build houses now in Tumble Park yeah. and, and, and the Marcus and, uh, and, uh, and the Gary Clones as well. Could make grand, build how grand houses are, couldn't you? Yeah. Well, I hope you're not going for election or nothing. No. <laughs> anyway, there's a picture here of the Irish side that beat South Africa in 1906. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Basil McClear, uh, McClear is standing tall from the right. Mm. This is uh, an Irish team. Yeah. 1906. No, no, them have two of them. There's some nice photographs in that now. Where did these yeah. photographs come out of? Uh, I, I'd have to show it to you if I told you. Yeah, oh yeah. I know, George Lee gave me some of them. And I got I some, of them, yeah. some, some of them off the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Next article here is by John Carroll. Oh. He's doing um, the Roman Catholic Church of St. Michael. This is part two. Yeah. He did um he had a and St. Munchens. And, and uh, he, did, um, he did part one of this last year. Yeah, it's yeah. True. He mounted him there. Yeah. Well, actually, of course, I see with Barrow Willow Street. Sent it to John in 1991. Yeah, tobacco in the city. Tobacco in the A snuff and tobacco merchant. Yeah. In Willow yeah. Street. Yeah. I was telling them um, they're all coming from wealthy backgrounds, you know, they wouldn't be 
they wouldn't be going to crosses for their funerals. No. No. They were all, they were all, all came from Merchant families. Oh, did it? All well healed away. Well, you see, that, that was the thing years ago. Many times we said that, that the thing was to have a priest in the family. And if you could have a nun, as well, you were on the pig's back altogether. You were guaranteed a place in heaven. Well, uh, the eldest son had to get the farm, of course. The second son was a priest. The third son was either a school teacher or a guard, and the same for the fourth son. Yeah. And if you had a son that was a waste of you, the problem said to get rid of him, you know. Yeah. And the same with the girls, if you could have the first girl, get one of them in noon at least, anyway, and try and marry off the rest of them. I was watching a program last night, I was waiting for something to come on, and the Ben Gravy I was on, and they asked the guy, this guy, why did you become a person if you don't believe in God? He said, I was the fourth or fifth son of, uh, of an earl, he said, so I had no choice. I see Bishop Edward the Wild is here. Yeah. Did you know St. Michael's Wine Club? Yeah, they, they have the portrait. He was on the cover there a couple of years ago. That, I, I remember it, yeah. Yeah. yeah but the, they found they found the blood. They were doing up the club and they found the, the painting. Yeah. So uh, the there's a Bishop Hallen in the same in the front. I could pick him out straight away when I looked at that photograph. I oh could yeah. In the front. Small hat on the right, you know, the bishop's hat. And I see uh, Monsignor Michael O'Reardon. I'm gonna he's the one. But he's yeah. all the things, he's all the 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 the, the things listed, all the curious listed. Up as far as when when's the last one he's in here? 1892. Yeah. What did he cover in this? Um, oh, yeah, up to 1900. 1830 up to 1900. Yeah. So I presume he'll do 1900 on next year. Yeah. Just so without a round. It's easy to get the photographs when you move on to 1900. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, next, we're moving on again. Another, another article here is um, Dueling Practices of the Death of Standish Stamer O'Grady of Nakaini. County Limerick. Well, the O'Grady's were all around, not to any hospital that generally had anywhere. And there are, most of them are buried anywhere. There's a picture here of the worst name in yeah. uh, of the O'Grady tomb in Nakaini, which yeah. it's, I'm very familiar with. And all the O'Grady graves are in there anyway. If, if, uh, the O'Grady's of Kilbelly Owen. Yeah. And he's the man that started the rugby club outside in uh, Brough. Uh, Major O'Grady. Major O'Grady. Yeah. I can't think of how to pronounce his name now. Yeah. James Villar or something of something O'Grady, the last colonel that died. But this is an article by Ken Cusack. And yeah. uh, it's all, during, uh, during was a big deal, of course. Yeah, it was, um, in, in Limerick alone, there was several deaths by during, and, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and the tragedy here was that um, uh, 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 O'Grady, like, he, he was a kind of an innocent party. He was just, just a, a bit rash. And um, the um, the guy who challenged him was uh, like backed off a duel with another man who he, he thought would would um, he would go to Bursford. So uh, his his regiment were um, the regiments were kind of um, they said that if they leave Dublin unless he, he found someone to to restore their honour. And O'Grady happened to him. It was a road rage. He was driving his carriage to uh, uh, Dame Street in Dublin, and he banged off uh, O'Grady. And uh, um, uh, O'Grady then had words. And, uh, they ended up. Who was Smith? Um, S M Y. They were from Waterford. From what? Oh, the Smiths. Yeah, I remember looking at the reference down in um, Ballantyre House. I don't try it. exactly. It's a beautiful house. Uh, not far from the Isle, actually. Uh, you're going to come to Waterford there. John, uh, John, John Rowland Smith. And, and I think his, his uncle uh, was involved in the duel as well. But um, he, he was from Ballantrae. That's where exactly. Like, I was trying to think where he's from. And, uh, but then he, he was, um, he got jailed for it, which is unusual, Smith. Yeah. Because, they maintained he, he drew too quick on, on, on O'Grady and uh, he didn't make enough effort to settle the, the dispute. In other words, he wanted to have blood on his hands. But he didn't, 
he had a successful army career afterwards. It didn't, it didn't hinder him, um, you know, but uh, unfortunately, O'Grady ended up down in Lockheedy in, in the in the world. He was well connected, O'Grady. You know. Oh well, O'Grady's a pretty lad. Yeah. All around there, uh, in Kilbarrow and in all, it's yeah. Loch Gaw nearly up to there and all. The, the yeah. thousands of acres said. And then they claimed, of course, they were one of the original Irish families. Yeah. You know. Oh dear, O'Grady. Yeah. Anyway, we we'll move along again to another article. I should again, I should tell people this. We're talking about the ordinary journal. Number number fifty five, yeah. uh, winter uh, twenty twenty, and it's uh, just only out since yesterday, and um, number fifty is not better than number fifty five, which was started of course by Jim Kemi and Kevin Hannon, who got yeah. the idea for this in nineteen eighty nine, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, so they, they, they brought out this. The first, it was a great yeah. idea, really. Thank you, sir. Come to another one here. Um, Elsa Wenger, a, a forgotten victim of Adolf Hitler's persecution of the Jews. She yeah. lived in O'Connor Street, number 87. Well, she stayed and uh, she lived in, in Wilton Street. Um, but she, um, she, uh, like, she never got over the persecution. And uh, she died in, a, in the hotel. And she lived in 74 Wilton Street, which is where a lot of Jewish. In Wilton Street, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Little Jerusalem, to all as known as. Yeah. But she, um, well, how did she come to them, Rick? Well, how her, get now? Yeah, she had relations here, and she came here to. And uh, that that picture on the council was the Crescent Hotel. I never heard of it. And he well, said, I tell you, no, I think that was the, I think that became the the, the city club. Did it? Yeah, I think so. That was the city club as well. That when I, I'd have to go down and have a look and see in Italy to figure out, I can't figure out which building was, but I think it was the city club that um, was there on, on that premises where yeah. fellas could go in at night and uh, they could be drinking all day. You had the Draper's Club and you had the city club. Or was that the Draper's Club? Because I confused myself now this minute. Because there were a few of those clubs for late night drinking. Yeah. Or re for uh, travellers, really, what were known as commercial travellers. Yeah, whether well, were. Uh, I think that actually Willie Hawk, who was in Todd's, he was manager of Todd's, he was involved with one of those clubs, and I can't think how, or whether he was on a, a, a board of it, or I don't know. But uh, yeah. I'm looking at who, who's, who's Rose, who's Rose really Fine? Well, she she is a daughter of, of Louis Fine. She played her in a play. Yeah. The, the, the Pig Town play. And the, she's in Elsie Reisinger. Elsie Reisinger, was victimized as a Jew, as a Jew in uh, Germany, and she came, she followed her daughter to Limerick. Her daughter was living in Limerick, and uh, she committed suicide. She couldn't handle the yeah. Truth. Or is she buried up under her daughter committed suicide? Is she buried outside in the Jewish graveyard? Yeah, that's her. See the fact there. Yeah, her, I know what the grave is actually. They refused to put her name on the hit. Yes, yeah, that's right. They kept it away from the rest of the Jews out there. Because I know what it is now. Catholic Church, uh, suicide is deemed to be a sin. So, yeah. you know, um, and even though they put, put a plaque up to her, it said, here lies the remains of an unknown Jewish soul. Yeah. It's, even though, let me make sure we trusted this, and this is 2000. I think it was. Yeah, uh, I know that, that grave was now. Uh, yeah. Because um, uh, I remember uh, I, I took the, as I told you this before, I took the, one of the head hunters from Israel, obviously a minister of finance in Israel. Mm. I know the, the Israeli ambassador he was at the time. He came down for a visit to the graveyard mm. and uh, I was asked to go to meet him. I took him around outside. And one funny thing I remember saying to him about the time the Jews, the Israel, devalued the, the currency. Shekels. Yeah, the shekels. And uh, I was saying to him that the brought had notes they took a knot off the end of each. The hundred became ten, and the ten became one. You know, and, and he said to me, uh, "My father did that." He said his father had been minister for finance in in, uh, in Israel. Oh. He said, "So my father did that." So funny. The way I was doing that, talking about banknotes and about the shekels and that. But he was a nice man, and I took him around, showing him some of the graves. That was before 
Uh, the last person that I know was buried there that was at the funeral was Stuart Klein. Yeah. Stuart is buried there. And I was at Stuart's uh, funeral. And yeah. the, the, the chief rabbi came down for that. Although yeah. Stuart himself was born in um, he was born in Liverpool. Stuart, you know, he wasn't um, he wasn't one of the Jews that we know from Lithuania that are all buried outside there anyway, that graveyard. They're, they're all from Lithuania, most of them. And, uh, the next up is what we were talking about earlier, the amount of Limerick people that were in the um, British Army, uh, all the people from all over County Limerick and Limerick City, uh, and it's the Limerick men in every regiment. You know, so you had... What, what after does that come there? That's the one, I passed that out, now I did. 56. Oh yeah, a Limerick man in every regiment. Uh, oh yeah, this is um, all about the very Limerick people that there's... Um, I'm looking here, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking here, John Barry. He's down, you know, in a carpenter, Private John Brown, B R O W N. He's no E in his name anyway. This has gone back a bit now. He was a yeah. carpenter from Limerick City, 1828, age 25. Yeah. God, you monked him down here. And uh, oh, John, John Montgomery, a weaver from Limerick, 1796. God, they mounted them, they mounted them, um, Raleigh, head of Captain Jerome's company, who fed them up. God, all the names. Uh, anyway, people want to, want, to, want to buy this to read all the names of it. And of mm. course, that picture, which is often seen, of the, the Welsh, uh, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers walking down the Connell Avenue. Well, actually, that's Quinn's Quinn Street, yeah. right outside where South Cobb is there. And Dixon's shop and uh, Ferguson's shop next to it, with the goat in front. That's where the monster then got the the idea for the goats for the for the the the, the monster team. They had the goat is to have a goat up in front. Yeah. And the story goes that they lost the match in Cork one time, and somebody did give the goat a fall up, up up you know where, and the goat was never seen again. Get out of the way. It was because they lost the match on Cork. Something like that sound with the goat. You blame yeah. the goat for losing the match. But uh, but that, that article, the goat's a long article about all the people, all the, all the Let me, that were involved. Quarter yeah. Master Sergeant Edward Mann, a labourer from Nantinen, uh, enlisted to the East India Company service. Mm. And uh, God, uh, he mounted them there from Limerick. God, when they travelled to these countries, you wonder how many of them ever came back. Yeah, some of them did and some of them didn't. And the <laughs> puppy died, they died in dysentery and yeah. some other complications out there. I know. Yeah, and, and a, a lot of them uh, went on pension, you know. Um, yeah. If they, did, if they did manage to survive their wounds and the, the disease, they often came back and um, they were better off than the locally opens because they had a pension, you know. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they were, it was a, a bit of a lottery because not a lot of them ended up dead, you know, ended up dead. Uh, but every, every, I see every place name in Limerick is going to be covered here, from Glynn to Galbally up to, yeah. uh, you know, remote areas. Yeah. I wonder like how, the, how people from, from kind of the middle of nowhere, Glynn, uh, well, Glynn they would have had a nice, you know, an influence on them to join up. But some of them come from obscure places. I know, I suppose there was always a land out there. There was a yeah. line with England at the time, in all the places, you know, that Kilmarnock could have had, could have had big houses there. But I'm just looking here, Noon and Newcastle West, you'd have had all these people. Yeah. Fellow here, Willem Arabin went on, from St Mary's, enlisted in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Now, yeah. How did he get involved? He probably in 1810, yeah. Halifax, in Nova Scotia, and he from Limerick, he from St Mary's Parish. Wonder like, you know. Can we move along to the final? The last after this in this is about um, John, John, John Cotton. A tragic fire in Kilbehany, a little village that people don't realize isn't County Limerick really. And associated with Mitchestown. It is, yeah. And, uh, and it's about, what is that about? A fire in Kilbehany you know, in 1816. Well, there was a, just out the newspapers, it was um, a wedding. A, a, a well to do farmer had a, a wedding and uh, Brought coals out to the barn, and to all the, pe the people at the wedding got burnt. And uh, then there's the folk memory, the folk folklore commission, 
because even though it was 120 years later, there were still memories in the parish about the, the burning which is such a tragedy. It, it's a bit like the drum colour her fire. Yeah, yeah. 400 years later, you know, yeah. um, the impact it had in the small community. You can imagine Kelbehini is not a metropolis like and then there's uh, you know the entire there's all families in, intermarried and everything you know and there's, there's he, he found there's a headstone in Kilbehini to the some of the people who, who died you know, the better off people it's um it's, it's an interesting story you know and it's goes it, back actually with the river I was out for the graveyard in Kilbehini about yeah. last March I'd say. Yeah. On my own, and I went out to see what's his name is buried there. What's O'Mahony, the the New Jean. Yeah, Jean. he's buried there. He's inside in that graveyard in Kilbane. And I went down, really I was looking for another house up the road that I can't even keep the name of now this minute, which actually isn't County Limerick. Uh Luganana, a house belonging to the last well I don't know who's living in it now, but the last people that lived in it, she was actually a granddaughter of um what's Lady Gregory. She was married to a Sir something Kennedy, I can't think of his name now. They were living in the house. And I went out looking for it. And I found it. Uh, so for, uh, there's, there's a team called the Galty something, Galty Gales, I think, a horror club. And their clubhouse isn't far from this particular house. They were all going up to a match. And they, I said, I was going to the match as well. But I was only looking for the house. And I found it anyway. But, uh, and I went back into the graveyard then looking for a man in his grave. Mm. And to stay inside the graveyard, I didn't kill any. Yeah. Because it's only about, I think there's about five miles of roadway in County Limerick there. We lived to Brary. Yeah. We went to this piece of land uh, about four or five miles. I don't even think it's four miles. And then you went to County Cork, where you're yeah. going to keep town again. Yeah. We can mm. forget about Kilbenny, about it being in County Limerick. Mm. You know, anyway. Tom, we'll come to the end, I think. Okay. And to tell people out there just to buy the there's nobody making money out of this, out no. of this journal. There's and no ad. Number 55, and mm -hmm. it's available, I hope, in most uh, bookshops, if they're open, yeah. from, uh, I suppose, from um, from tomorrow, and tomorrow being Tuesday, you know, it'll be in the shops. Yeah. And they can get it. And look out for the two little soldiers. It's a very colourful front, you yeah. know, and uh, it's, uh, it's um, they're on the front of it, you know. So, anyway. I was told to subscribe to our channel. How do you do that? You just subscribe, click the button, and subscribe. Anyway, this is uh, Lear, LearMedia.tv. My name is Tony Brown, and his name is like uh, it's Tom Donovan. And uh, you can okay. get in touch with us sometimes if you want to know. Email us or get in touch with the, the website and the American Historical Society, and you'll find out more. So good night to all. Good luck, anyway, Tom. We'll talk again. Okay, Tom. All right. Good night, Joe.